In this video, we're gonna talk about a common and emerging problem, meaning it's getting worse, and that is the issue of elephant snot. That's what I hear a lot of people call it. I think generally speaking, what we're seeing that's increasing is called bacterial zooglia. I think that's how you say it, <laughs> zooglia. Um, you can look it up. There's all sorts of uh, papers on bacterial zooglia. What seems to be happening, and a lot of technicians have observed this, is as we've gone to all aluminum coils, we see more of this growth happening rapidly in drain pans uh, and in drain lines and condensate drains. Now, we've seen algae growth. We've seen, you know, different types of gelatinous biofilms. You know, those are fancy names for gunk that builds up in drain lines and condensate pans. We've seen that forever. But what's unique about this new bacterial zooglia is that it happens really fast and it will completely block a condensate drain pan or drain line. And what seems to be happening is aluminum coils don't have obviously copper in them and copper acted as an antibacterial. That's undisputed. Copper has antibacterial, antiviral and antifungal properties um, as does silver. Several metals do. They produce ions and those ions help prevent the growth of certain bacteria, viruses and funguses. Now I'm not a microbiologist so I'm not going to pretend that I know you know everything that it prevents and the levels to which it does. But in the future Field, we're tasked with solving this problem. And so what are some things that you can do to solve it? Well, first off, on new equipment, there are cases where this isn't actually the bacterial zooglia. It can actually be oil that is used in order to create the coil. It can be on the coil. Sometimes that runs down into the drain pan and that creates kind of a, a white uh, paste or film. And so that's not the same thing. If you have a brand new uh, system where you do have oil residue present, it's a good idea to do a really thorough cleaning on that evaporator coil first. We especially seem to see this on rooftop package units. That's something that we've noticed a few times. But in residential applications where you have these aluminum evaporator coils where it happens quickly, the first thing you can do is source control, meaning that the less organic material that makes it onto the evaporator coil, the less of this bacteria you're going to have because the bacteria has to feed on something. So starting with using things like good, you know, maybe MERV 11 style four inch uh, media filters, making sure that everything is well sealed where the media filter goes in. If you're using filter back returns, you know, taping the filters in place with masking tape to make sure there's not bypass around anything you can do to reduce the amount of bypass, forcing everything through a good quality, properly sized filter. And we've talked many times that you have to control for pressure drop across the filter. So it's not like you can just put in a MERV 11 filter and call it good without doing testing. But a big part of what you can do is control the source. Now, things like UV lights, bipolar, those could potentially help. Now, again, I haven't seen consistent results with this because it doesn't happen in all cases. We'll have many installs where we installed aluminum coils and it doesn't happen. And then it just seems like in some places it has a particular particular bacteria in the air that reacts and then creates this, this gooey snot. But it's undisputed that if we can keep less stuff on the coil and if we can kill the bacteria, which we should be able to do with a UV light in close proximity to the coil properly installed, bipolar shows some promise. For example, bipolar works really well uh, undisputedly in ice machines. When ice machines are in something like a sandwich shop where there is a lot of yeast in the air, that yeast gets in there and grows. Now again, uh, not all of these bacteria and funguses are the same, but we do know that in those applications where you have this nice controlled environment, bipolar can help. Bipolar may be something to look into if you have extreme cases. Um, something that we've been practicing whenever we have mild cases is we've been using small pieces of copper tubing smash flat. So you take some three eighths or even quarter inch copper off of a ductless line set and you smash it flat and you lay that in the drain pan. This has especially been helpful with ductless systems that have been having regular problems. And then some guys have been taking 15% silver rod, snipping a little piece of that and putting it in there as well. So now you're adding some silver and you're adding some copper it will last a really long time and it can prevent some of that growth. It stands to reason that it would. Now, some people think that that's snake oil. Uh, it really isn't. We know that copper and silver do create ions that can inhibit the growth of bacteria, fungus, and viruses. So it stands to reason that that's not a bad idea, especially in coils now where we've removed the copper equation. Before we had the copper all throughout the coil and so that served uh, to stem the tide. And again, I'm going based on, um, there, there isn't a holistic study been done on this that I've been able to read a lot of information from a lot of different sources. And this is what, I, what I'm sharing with you. And a couple products that I really like that I talk about a lot are the pan and drain spray and EVAP plus from refrigeration technologies, because both of those products are very safe. Um, they're food safe. It's okay to use them in cases like restaurants or grocery store cases. They don't have strong odors and they are both enzyme based, meaning that they break down over time. The enzymes break down that biofilm or that organic material. And so we've had really good luck with that. I've used the pan and drain spray, especially in ductless drain pans, cases where we're getting odors, uh, 
as well as the EVAP Plus or their EVAP Cleaner. Now, there are a lot of other products on the market. You feel free to try whatever uh, works for you. Some of them are sprays. You have your traditional pan tabs or your pads that you can put in the drain pan. The only thing I would caution you with anything that you're going to place in the drain pan, whether it's tabs, pads, pieces of copper, whatever, is make sure that it's not going to actually inhibit the flow of water either out of the channels underneath the drain pan or as it exits that drain pan into the primary drain. Also make sure that you're not inhibiting the secondary drain and potentially preventing the condensate switch from doing its job. So there's some things you want to think about there, but those are sort of the tools in your toolbox. Again, source control, keep as much organic material off that evaporator coil in the first place. Make sure that you can kind of distinguish between what we call elephants, not this, this bacterial zuglia and maybe just some you know oil in the manufacturing process. Again, you still need to wash coils regularly and something like EVAP Plus works great for that, but then you may try you know, some silver or copper in the drain pan and maybe even more extreme, a bipolar type system or UV lights in order to help prevent these issues. Again, this is a battle that we haven't all won. I, we don't have a lot of problems with it in our market. We've had a few cases and we've been able to deal with it just through some of these little, little tips that we've used. There are some people who have reported that none of this seems to be working. And so I'm not saying that this is a silver bullet, but if you did have a silver bullet, you could put it in the drain pan and that would uh, help prevent the zuglia from growing. And if nothing else, you learned a new word today. Hopefully that's helpful. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.